couple we had a couple of other signatures though that we dealt with early on okay. too that were vital. Uh -huh. um, one is uh, that if this if this land level change, this subsidence on the coast, this lowering of coast, takes place real fast, and it's taking place right along the edge of the sea, then you'd expect also the sea floor would change its level. Mm -hmm. And a sudden change in the level of the sea as you get the sea bottom as you get during a big subduction zone earthquake is the kind of thing that sets off a tsunami because it abruptly changes the surface level of the sea. Mm -hmm. The sea wants to get back to where it was, so gravity takes over and you get a train of tsunami waves. Well, those tsunami waves come into the, in, into the coastal land that's been freshly dropped. And if those tsunami sands have if those tsunamis have sand to eat, they can eat that up coming in and then disgorge it on the freshly down dropped landscape. Mm -hmm. And you end up with a sheet of sand as a marker of the tsunami. If you didn't see sheets of sand anywhere on our buried soils along our Pacific coast, then you'd wonder whether these were really great subduction zone earthquakes sure. because big subduction zone earthquakes are famous for producing tsunamis as we saw horrifically in 2004. Mm -hmm. So anyways, that Sheets of sand became a very important part of the coastal geological records of our big subduction zone earthquakes here at Cascadia. Mm -hmm. Then there was a third piece of evidence that was key for the engineers. If you're an engineer designing a school or hospital in, in Seattle, even over here in Ellensburg, and you're worried about the long distance effects of subduction zone shaking, uh, you're not going to design for subsidence. You're not going to design for tsunami you're going to design for shaking. Mm -hmm. Well, you want to, the engineers would want to see that this subsidence and these tsunamis really were accompanied by shaking that might be damaging the buildings sure. if they're going to take the trouble to design against subdu subduction zone earthquakes in our region. So uh, a civil engineer named Steve, or Steve Obermeyer was the one who, along the Columbia River, found hundreds of sand-filled cracks that uh, resulted from a kind of a quicksand phenomenon where the ground shakes and, and sand that's loose and wet uh, turns quick just in the way that you can shake sand and, and it will lose its strength. They call it liquefaction. Uh -huh. And these liquefaction features are present in great abundance along the Columbia. So it's really that, that, that collection onshore of three kinds of evidence, of evidence of abrupt change in land level evidence that tsunami came ashore, and evidence that the ground shook. And all three of those are out there. So that's a, that's a, uh, uh, that became a compelling uh, combination of sure. evidence. Now,